This is Banjo, and today I'm going over navigation in the BF-109 in DCS World. Navigation is done much like it is on any other period aircraft, using just a standard magnetic compass. There's no gyro on this particular aircraft as there is in the P-51. As we reach our first waypoint here, Sanaki Kolki, we can see that we're sitting right over the airbase. So from here, we'll start our flight plan going into F-10 which will bring up the map and we see my aircraft sitting right above Sanaki Kolki airfield so I'll select the ruler tool hold right click and drag it from my location to my desired heading and we can see range and heading to target displayed on the information tape across the top of the map going back into the cockpit we can see to the right of the altimeter we have a magnetic compass the outer bezel on this compass can be rotated to our desired heading marked by the tick at the very top of it. So we'll drag that down to our desired heading. At this point we can see our desired heading marked by the outer bezel and we can see our aircraft's heading marked by the point in front of the aircraft marked on the magnetic compass. So we basically just have to bank our aircraft 80 degrees to our left and then level out and observe our magnetic compass, at which point it should level out at or near our desired heading. And as we had see, once our aircraft levels out, the compass will start to orient itself onto the proper magnetic heading. It's at this point that we're going to fly this heading for the distance noted down earlier, which was around 40 kilometers. Although we're going to see our target well in advance, being another airbase. But as we fly this heading, it'll eventually take us to our second waypoint, which is Kobiletti Airfield. Though a thing to note is that the compass is going to suffer a bit of deviation due to magnetic variation. Interestingly though, attached to the close side of the fuse box, there's a piece of paper noting down magnetic variation, although it seems the conversions themselves are blank on it. Hopefully this is something that'll be patched at some future date. It seems, looking out just over the left side of my nose, we see Kobilati Airfield. So at this point, I'm just going to steer directly for it and head towards it. As often, the best way to deal with deviation due to the magnetic variation is to just find your target in visual sight and fly directly to it. But often, that's not an option. Though a good rough estimate of the deviation in this region is somewhere around 5 to 7 degrees. At this point, I'll just make a cut the point where we reach waypoint 2, which is Kobiletti Airfield. Now that we've reached our second waypoint, being waypoint 2, Kobiletti Airfield, we'll go into F10 again and mark down our third waypoint. Typically you do this ahead of time and write it on a piece of paper or something. At this point, for waypoint 3, I'm going to mark down that lake just to the north and northwest of Kobiletti, as it's a pretty identifiable landmark. So I'll use the ruler tool, drag it from my location to my desired, note down the distance and heading, mark it on my outer bezel of my magnetic compass, and then begin steering towards it. As again with our last example, we'll take a look at where this is in relation to the aircraft. We can see that it's at our rear right quarter at about our 5 o'clock. So at this point we're going to unpause active pause and begin our bank towards our desired heading. Being that the flight plan in this example is composed of very short legs to the waypoints, we've been able to see each target visually, fortunately enough. But the magnetic air in this case isn't too great. It's only over a longer distance that you tend to accumulate more of a magnetic air due to magnetic deviation. Again, we'll make a cut until we reach this waypoint, at which point we'll course out the final waypoint of this example. Now that we've reached our second waypoint, sitting over top of the lake, we'll go into the map again, and we can see that we've done almost a 360 back to Sanaki. We've pretty much done two legs of a triangle, starting at Snacky, going to Kobiletti. So we're going to use our ruler tool, get our course and distance, and head back to Snacky. Setting it on the outer bezel, we can see that it's off to our right at about our 3 o'clock. So 
this point, we can unpause and begin our bank to 3 o'clock, which should put us onto a heading for our final objective, which is to land back at Sanaki Airfield. Any aircraft of the air is going to navigate in much the same fashion, using a magnetic compass, some may have a gyro, some may use a different compass, but in all, it's going to be basically the same method of navigation. Even modern planes, if you lose enough systems, you won't be flying on your GPS anymore and you'll have to rely again on your magnetic compass. So it pays to know how to navigate well using just that instrument. At this point, we're pretty much on our heading, and this video is pretty long now, so I'll make a cut till we reach our final objective. And as we can see, we're back at Sanaki Kolkin, where we started our flight plan from. Checking in on the map, we can verify that fact. And as you can see, navigation is a fairly simple task in these aircraft. Or any aircraft for that matter, so long as you have a working magnetic compass.